Hey guys, Caboose here. Uh, first up, a quick apology. This is not the upcoming video I promised in the comments section on Risk vs. Reward in Guild Wars 2. This is actually going to be a quick guide to the Crab Grab game that came out with the South Sun Cove update. Uh, it's kind of been stealing my time. I've been having a lot of fun with it. However, there's a lot of people who have no idea how it works and uh, can't be bothered working it out, so I'm going to bring you a quick guide to um, help you with that. Now the idea behind Crab Grab is very simple. There's a crab in there, you want to grab it and you want to hold on to it. Very simple premise for the game, however the execution is anything but. There are a ton of factors in this and uh, once you've learnt all the ins and outs of this, uh, games can get really complicated. But before we get into all that, let's start with the basics. When the game starts, you have four default abilities. Your first ability is Swipe, and this is your primary means for getting the crab off other players. However, it can be used to steal items from other players as well. Also note, it has a four second cooldown, so don't go running at players spamming it expecting to get the crab. Timing is important. Your second ability is Find Rock, and using this will replace your Swipe ability with Rock Toss. Rock Toss is a short range projectile attack that dazes your target. Its use is pretty situational, however, as a dazed player can still dodge, and if you're using this on the crab carrier, most likely someone is going to swoop in and steal the crab from the enemy player before you can do so yourself, because it'll be cooling down. Ability 3 is Dash, and this is one of the most important abilities in Crab Toss, both for offensive and defensive purposes. While channeling Dash, players will run forwards in a straight line, evading all attacks. You can also hold down the button to dash longer. This will allow you to dash from one side of the arena all the way to the other. It does have its drawbacks, however. When the dash is finished channeling, your character stands motionless for two seconds and is a sitting duck for any enemy players. So make sure you've lined up your path before you start using this attack, or you may run into enemy players, or even worse, a wall. Finally, we have Punch. Now, Punch is pretty much an emergency attack in case your swipe missed the Crab Carrier. Punch doesn't do anything to players holding items, and if it hits the Crab Carrier, you don't get the Crab. However, the Crab goes flying out of the enemy player's hands and onto the ground. The only time you should even consider using this is when you've failed at taking a swipe at the Crab Carrier and you're desperate to have them drop the Crab. So, you found yourself lucky enough to pick up the crab. Well, congratulations, because now absolutely everything in the arena wants to kill you. And I'm not talking just about the players. Throughout the fight, swarms of baby kraka will continuously spawn and chase down the crab carrier. If they reach any players, including the crab carrier, they will jump on and either latch themselves to the player's feet or the player's face. A baby kraka attached to the face causes all attacks to miss, so it's of little consequence to the crab carrier, but a big problem to any people trying to get the crab off them. A baby kraker to the legs hampers all movements and reduces the distance of your dash ability. Thankfully, you can remove krakers simply by dodging. They still cause damage when they hit you, so try and avoid them. Speaking of damage, the other thing after you are going to be the giant krakers, which will periodically stop their wandering around and roll in the direction of the current crab carrier, bringing the health of anyone they touch to zero in the process. Thankfully, you do not die in crab toss when your health points reach zero. You simply drop all the items you are carrying on the ground and become invulnerable and unable to act for about three seconds. Then it's back onto your feet and straight back into the fray. Lastly, you gain two extra abilities when you pick up the crab. Crab Crack and Crab Toss. Crab Crack knocks your opponent down and is particularly useful at dealing with solo threats, especially when they've just finished a sprint in your direction and are completely helpless. Crab Toss passes the crab to an enemy player. Now this might sound completely useless at first, but there is a very neat trick you can do with this. When you throw it at a player, it actually knocks them down and stuns them for a second. You can follow this up with a quick swipe and take it straight back. As if all this wasn't confusing enough, the referee also throws crates into the arena, which drop offhand and mainhand weapons to aid you and hinder your foes. Mainhand weapons occupy skill slots 1 and 2, while offhand weapons occupy skill slots 5. I'm gonna go through them one by one now and show you what they can do. First up is the Karka Egg. Ability 1 throws the egg at the target area. However, this has a very slow travel time and can be very tricky to aim. However, when you get it right on a Zerg, the pursuing Karka will usually clean up absolutely everybody for you, so it does have its use. Ability 2 places it like a trap, and if you want to pick up something else, always remember to do this before you do. Next up we have the Plank. This is also fairly common and it's also very useful. Ability 1 is Plank Smash, which will launch you at your foe and if you land a direct hit, not only knock them down and cause them to drop the crab, but the crab will be put straight into your hands. A less direct hit will send the crab flying. 
Ability 2 is Plank Swing. This is particularly useful if you're running to a crab on the ground. As you run to it, use Ability 2 and you will knock down any competition that may be aiming for the crab as well, leaving you free to pick it up on your own. Once again, a direct hit on the uh, crab carrier with this ability will cause the crab to go directly in your hands, where a less direct hit will simply knock the crab out of their hands. Also take note that if either of these abilities hit, the plank will be broken. Next up we have the less common but extremely useful fishing rod. It only has one ability, Go Fish, but this is pretty much a ranged swipe. It has a slow travel time, but if it hits its target, the Kraka will be directly transported into your hands. This does knock you down, however, so enemy players that uh, predict you doing this can quickly swipe it out of your hands before you can react. Lastly, we have the very rare and very powerful Anchor. It has a single ability, Fling Anchor, but this has the range of the entire area. You fling the anchor high into the air, and about five seconds later it will come down on the target of your choosing, knocking them down for a full five seconds. If that player was holding a crab, the crab will be sent flying. While this ability can be dodged, it's almost purely luck, as it's nearly impossible to see this coming. There are also two offhand weapons. The first of these is South Shore Punch. The South Shore Punch is just a healing item, however it has one very good benefit. As well as healing you, it also restores all your endurance. If you have one of these when you nab the crab as well as your dash, you're in a really good position. You can dash away from the enemies, dodge twice, drink it, then dodge two more times. Usually by then your sprint will be off again and you can sprint well out of the way and back into safety. The other offhand is the conch, and this one's a bit more rare, however it is still very useful. It's simply an AoE fear, on a fairly generous cooldown too I might add. Once again, this is very useful when you're carrying the crab. Lastly, I'm going to quickly go over scoring. The most obvious way to score, of course, is to hold the crab and continue holding it. However, there is one other way to gain points, and that is to take the crab from an enemy player. This way, the players who sit back on the fringe using items need to be much more clever about it, as they won't be getting as many steals as the people who are running around with the Zerg constantly stealing the item. Oh, I nearly forgot to go over the rewards you get for participating in this. There are two titles up for grabs, Crab Grabber and Crab Toss Champion. Regardless of how badly you did, at the end of every match, a chest will spawn in the center of the arena. Inside this chest is a single cracker shell and a single item. The item is usually green, however, it can be both gold and exotic. If you manage to come first, there will be two items in the chest for you, as well as five cracker shells. Extra incentive to do your best there, guys. And I believe that pretty much wraps up the basics of the Crab Toss minigame. I hope this was helpful to you, everyone. Stay tuned after the logo for some in-game footage of how all this comes together. Anyway, this has been Caboose, and I will see you all next time. The top 10 things Guild Wars 2 needs to improve. You know, it would be much less impressive if it showed the army standing just to the left. Oh, what I wouldn't give to see this thing mobile! I guarantee that'd spread the players out a bit.